What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 10 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, battle is aplenty, culminating in yet another quest battle as we unlock the legendary hero Albert Nictus, uh, who is a sort of monster leading a legendary hero, the former Grand Master of the Ordo Templarum, and he buffs both monsters and something I didn't notice. Uh, last time he also buffs Bloodkin Thralls. I did want an army with a bunch of Bloodkin Thrall infantry and we can combine them with monsters in this one. Plus considering they evolve into a bunch of monsters this works out really quite well. I am excited to get this guy's army up and running and see what it can do for us. A lot more variety to come as well as we are just getting started with the legendary heroes and soon we'll have another legendary lord as we just need one more blood kiss and in terms of what we gotta do this time i guess we can obliterate this little uh, ratty army i was gonna maybe try out uh, looks on them but there's basically nothing there and i feel like we can do this at attacking the saurus instead so briefly wallach you're going to just track down and destroy hill Geek's force there's really nothing there anyway and oh there's two islands there i'm very tempted if we could get a materials at sea it would be, just be so incredibly valuable and oh wow that hurt us more than i was uh, than i was expecting it to hmm. nonetheless we still need to release those captives i take it we don't heal at sea unless we do not hmm do we move here and back to the awakening just to grab the island because it's so close i feel like since it's so close we probably should so go right there. Take them all. all right. Oh! In the Great Ocean we heal, but in the Vampire Coast we do- Oh, wow, that worked out. <laughs> and we get ourselves another Book of Ashur for our trouble as well. Let's briefly head back to the Awakening, though obviously we can't have the Source Army attack it as it won't be able to hold, but we'll be upgrading it to Tier 3 next turn, and then shortly after, building that lost Library of Huatl. Speaking of those libraries, we are closing in on Mount Gunbed, and still need to head to Lamia, although Aberash is going to head down there and take Lamiak himself because, well, it's appropriate that he takes his former home back. And Karaka's son will probably send Zacharias out to do. Once he's done, and he's basically good to go for an actual uh, for an actual army and an actual fight. I would like to get him a blood dragon here, and we got one coming in in two turns here as well. As he will by and large be a blood dragon focused army plus the ghosties. Hmm. We could get him another. Well, you know, I'll think about it. It really depends on how many. Ow! Oh, that gave us another blood kiss because that was a uh, faction leader. Well, isn't that just fantastic? Orders and Ordo Profundum and the Abyssal Revenant awaken. Where you. Oh, that activates the Riptide to go to Nong Chang, which we need to go to as well. There we go. Beautiful. The Vampire Coast certainly didn't like that very much. Uh, so Empire, Kislev, Southern Realms, Followers of Nagash, and Vampire Coast will all hate us quite a bit. And oh, Ordo Templarius Unified makes the Vampire Factions hate us as well. So fairly unlikely that we'll actually be able to be friendly with Vlad and we'll eventually have to destroy him. Sad though it may be. I feel like he should have like you should have like a special uh, mm, relation bonus like a anti-prejudice bonus with sylvania specifically if you have uh, if you have as the leader of your faction non uh Aberash rather than wallach but if you have wallach maybe you know a little bit more hatred i don't know and uh, something along those lines on the other hand, it's also nice to destroy vampires as they present a decent sized threat as we saw with that one Heinrich Kemmler army with all those mobs of undead. So, and good either way. Anyway, Edmund von Sinclair, you still have to move this turn and we did want to do something for you. Specifically, two of your Bloodkin Thralls will be upgraded to Drakenhof Templar Sky Reavers. Yes. One, two, of course, we'll have more of these in our other monstrous army. Oh, they're expensive, but they are 
Oh, we have cap too low. All right. Well, fortunately, cap raises all the monsters cap at once, so it's decent. It's about equivalent with racing thrall cap, so... Well, not quite there twice as much, but nonetheless. And we'll do another one. Once again, we want all these armies to be able to function on their own, and the more crazy monster nonsense we get them, the more they'll be able to do that. All right. And just to double check, do the buffs... Yes, the Drakenhof Templar Sky Reavers do get uh, do share the buffs for that, so we can get them more melee defense, and they will certainly need it. And then buff the uh, buff the various Graveguard in this particular army, because that's what we'll want to do with them anyway. Uh, the reason I wanted to do that was Edmund. We're going to send you into another fight. Blade Shield for you, Theresia, and I bring darkness. who do we attack? We could hit Carl, but then Middenheim would be in danger. From Serena Catrin, the likelihood of her destroying it, however, is fairly low. On the other hand, Carl would present absolutely no obstacle to us here, so... Mm, it's just that he's nearby. We could attack this, but at the same time we'll most likely be forced into getting another plague on us. But this will provide a much more difficult fight, as Serena Catrin is there, and we've got the Golden Knight as well. Some ice guard? Yeah, I think this is the battle because it'll be more fun. And... Ah! We have the Forsaken Circle, the first unit of Forsaken uh, Circle available to us, but it'll be an Albrecht Nictus's army. We just need to make sure we actually get him a lord, and we also need to field the Abyssal Revenant. I guess the question is where? Yes. Certainly the... Waldemar Ratab doesn't serve too much of a purpose right now. I feel like what we need to do is we need to delete him, which we've been expecting to do for a while since he's low level. Shame to let all of these uh, skeleton warriors go, but if we send the Abyssal Revenant somewhere, it'll probably be to stay near Illustria. Let's Lichmore maybe can act as a, uh, uh, can act as a, well, vampire and head out for some islands, and Wallach can go to, I don't know, Carcassonne or take the Riptide to Nong Chang, perhaps? Something along those lines. He needs to go somewhere, after all. Well, anyway, that doesn't change the fact that we need you, sir, to hit Serena Catrin's army. And away we go. Now it's got to Pyrrhic victory for us, eh? And, oh. Uh, huh. Does defeating Serena Catrin still give you Frostbite, which will override Psychic Siphoning? Which would be really unfortunate, because it's much worse. Frostbite, I mean. Hmm. Although it would combine nicely with uh, Gela Death, but nonetheless. Nonetheless. Anyway, uh, you guys have a relatively low melee attack, so we can give you this, and we can give you the bonus leadership. Really don't want to lose these guys. Uh, they do have magical attacks, so they won't be needing the Lichbone Pennant. But since we have spell swords on the thralls, we can give the Lichbone Pennant to, let's say, one of the uh, uh, one of the units of a Graveguard. That looks good to me. Before we get started, however, once again, we did reach the engagement threshold. Once again, we're going for the hour-long episode, and once again, the offer does continue to stand 400 likes and 50 comments and the next episode will be similarly an hour long gotta get to episode 13 for the next threshold to be lowered but for now we got battle ahead go All right, S simple and uh, to the point. Give them death, indeed. Man, edmund has been getting a lot of action over the last few episodes, getting plenty of fights, and we're damn well going to continue rewarding him. Also looking, uh, looking pretty good as he's charging on in, and we get to use our armored Vargeist now. The Te uh, the uh, Templehof, Drakenhof rather, uh, Sky Reavers here. Can't wait to see how effective they are now that they're on our team. Of course, they don't have the buffs that we would normally have for them uh, if uh, we were to move through our red line, but we'll get those buffs eventually, and I'm sure it'll be more than enough right here. Anyway, um, let's get back into the action. The Vargeists are going to, or the Sky Reavers, I guess, are going to head towards this flank together with the Black Knights, who would be 
very fragile. The enemy does have one of these frost worms on the field, and we're going to try to see if the Vargeists can sort of surround it and destroy it before it can achieve too much, if we can manage to sort of peel it away from the rest of our forces. Still, cool looking unit, and we'll see how effective it, it is against the damage dealing Vargeists there while we move on in. Anyway, let's speed this up a little bit while we take our position, and oh, it looks like an enemy unit of winged lancers has been caught, or perhaps managed to uh, peel itself away too far from the enemy lines, and thus we're going to hit it from three sides or with our black knights until it does get destroyed. That said, winged lancers are going to be a little bit more uh, damage dealy than black knights are, and by the looks of it, have managed to take nearly half of the HP off one of our units of black knights, all while fighting uh, the others. Over on the leftmost flank, it looks like we've managed to catch some poor, poor Kosovite dervishes, which is a horrible matchup against these armored Vargeists. It would be a horrible matchup against regular Vargeists as well. But this is going to hurt, and it looks like, damn, look at them just mince their way through that poor unit of Kosovites. By our blood is really not helping them there, because in the 30 seconds that they are unbreakable, every single one of them gets killed. Glorious. All right, a hey, big entrance for the uh, for the bats, and here comes uh, the frostworm and a snow leopard to try to deal with them. We are going to send Teresia Gans into uh, uh, into the fray to help out a little bit, drop some zombies, and distract the enemy frostworm and the enemy uh, snow leopard for a few seconds before we regroup and drop all the big bats down on uh, the frostworm. All right, and it's going to try to escape. Well, that's just rude. We're not going to let it do so. Going to continue following it with the uh, uh, with our hero and pop the tormentor sword to make sure that we aren't and distracted. The rest of our forces are slowly making their way towards the fray, but of course this army is full of grave guard, which are very slow, especially when that ice sheet is upon them, dropping them down to a mere twenty speed. On the rightmost flank, the winged lancers are done, and it looks like another unit of Kosovite dervishes foolishly made it into the fray to help perhaps uh, the winged lancers but the Kosovite dervishes are basically like dire doggos they're so fragile that they're not really uh, going to be too helpful here also uh, where are we here where are we here? And we have the Serena and oh, there. I was looking for the Golden Knight and just wanted to take a uh, just wanted to take a quick uh, look at you, um, but alas, we uh, alas I couldn't find him between those two bears. Lanashi giggle. Anyway, uh, the Totem of Ursus, the passive hex that negates magical weapons and forces silence on all nearby units. It means not only uh, can you not uh, uh, can you not cast spells, you also can't use items or abilities, which can be really quite annoying uh, if you're relying on something like a uh, uh, relying something on like a healing potion. Fortunately, we have a lot of other heals available to us, and we can always run away and heal up if needed with one of our heroes if they get badly damaged. It looks like, oh, I was about to say the Frostworm might have brought down one of the uh, Bat Boys, but it looks like they do get back up and continue surrounding and destroying the thing. There we go. With that, it will route. We are preventing any enemy reinforcements from reaching uh, our Bats by spawning zombies. Gotta love the zombies for that particular use. And good targeting from the enemy AI. It's gonna go for the Butchers of Middenheim, our, one of our units of Graveguard with great weapons, arcing their shots over the Graveguards with sword and board. Smart enough for the AI to do that, at least. Uh, but at the end of the day, all of our Graveguard will still make it into the fray, and the bat's now done with that Frostworm, which just barely made it off-field. Uh, so he didn't get to see... Well, there was no death animation to see. But now it's time to start ripping through the enemy back lines. The Vargeists have always been super effective at this sort of thing, and I don't imagine that uh, the uh, Sky Reavers are going to be any different. And for some reason, the AI decides to use use a, a buff on the uh, on the Kossars here, but that's just not gonna help. 
And there we go. More Black Knights are streaming into the enemy back lines. Those Ice Guard will no longer be able to fire, and they are swords, not glaives, which means they won't have the bonus anti-large that they would like against the bats and the Black Knights. All right, I guess it's an episode where we get to see uh, lots of uh, uh, new things, or at least uh, I hope. Well, I guess we saw lots of new things last episode as well. And technically we saw these guys in that quest battle, didn't we? But nonetheless, they are new for ourselves. Anyway, gonna hit uh, Serena Katrin with that uh, Storm of the Night. Doing a little bit of damage and reducing her speed as well. Looks like the Golden Knight has made it into the fray as well. And uh, while he may be a foe, should still see some of his animations. And damn, he's a big boy as well. He's like troll-sized, maybe? Maybe not Altharian sized, but... <laughs> oh, still pretty big. And ooh, he's going to move away and head for the Vargas and Dam. That's a big hit on one of the Sky Reavers. Gonna have to be careful about that. Um, but it looks like he doesn't want to fight them directly. Maybe a smart move? Hard to say. Mounts of power is at about 70% in our favor now, though I think that's deceptive as the enemy army is very much on the verge of collapse. The back lines are destroyed. Uh, Edmund has basically defeated this Frost Maiden of Ice, and it looks like Serena Catrin is surrounded by a bunch of other units. The flanks are... the leftmost flank is ours. The rightmost flank is having a little bit more trouble, uh, but our Bloodkin Aspirant has arrived here to add zombies to the fray and distract the enemies while the damage dealers can move in. Speaking of the damage dealers, here come uh, the uh, Bat Boys once again. And... I think they were going after the Kalsar Spears, but they got too far, so they're just gonna jump in on these guys. There we go. This army really needed the damage dealers when uh, uh, we're mostly relying on the Graveguard Anvil. So these guys are going to be very, very good here. And we have plenty of ways to chase enemies down, and in this particular case it looks like we're ready to do so. Looks like getting a little bit of action of the Golden Knight uh, versus our uh, Lord Edmund here. Uh, though I do think that the entire enemy army is in by our blood now, and will soon be shattered. And just exchange a couple more hits. There we go, starting that uh, spirit siphoning or soul siphoning that the Drakenhof lords do. And we just gotta wait for that 30 seconds to pass and the battle's ours. Alright, no items, no abilities on Edmund, no magical damage like he would usually have, but he still has uh, the hunger upon him and will still regenerate. Yeah, just smash his multiple souls out of him with that soul siphoning. And uh, there we go. Looks like the Golden Knight will shatter, and that Serena will shatter, and the rest of the battle is ours. This damn unit of Khazars over on the uh, very edge of the right flank just kept firing and firing. And because we ignored it, but we'll run it down at the end. All right, very, very nice. It's great to see the uh, Super Vargeist slash Sky Reavers in action there, and uh, they have certainly given us the power-up uh, that this army needed to act on its own without problems. Lovely. Lovely indeed. We've also got the Black Knights continuing to do work, and why did I name the second one and not the first one? Well, either... Either way, it looks like the one I named was the one that did the best, so name confers power as well. Anyway, uh, we are going to, I guess, sack it, mostly because we want to return to our own territory. It's probably going to plaguenate us and enables frostbite attacks, which does indeed overwrite that psychic siphoning, which is a bit of a shame. And gotta be careful. Oh. Huh. Okay, we gotta... Okay, I gotta remember not to defeat... Serena Katrin uh, with Aberash. In SFO, that thing is removed, but I don't think we want Aberash with uh, 
uh, with frostbite attacks. I assume he's going to get some kind of attack ability from something here, and it probably shouldn't be frostbite, as it's, I'd say, not very useful on most lords. Yeah, it's good for chasing stuff down, but uh, uh, it's much better on a unit than it is on a uh, on a lord. Anyway, oh, you can't go into raiding camp. Well, that's a shame. I guess you can then return to Mordheim. Middenheim. We don't have Mordheim. Heal up to full, and then, you know what, maybe it's time to start making ruins of everything around Middenheim. Why not? And then travel elsewhere for this army, now that it can sort of act on its own. Uh, we still do want to get it a couple more replacement units of Graveguard, which I guess... I was going to delete this guy, but now I'm not so sure. We can also have him ferry over some Graveguard, instead of bothering to build it here, but then... Yeah, we don't have enough martial valor to recruit an additional lord. I suppose we could temporarily let uh, Lutz go in favor of the Abyssal Revenant. Which starts at level 22, which ain't too bad. Mm, we could recruit stuff immediately from Wallach. Alright, let's... I guess we'll try you out a little bit later. But I think the Ordo Grandmaster has to take priority with you because he has to start growing his horde and you don't have a horde to grow. So you can be brought back in five turns or so. Oh, wait. A moment, one second. Was there a possibility of deleting... No, we need you to ferry stuff from Aberash to Anarch. Yeah, we just don't have the capacity, though we do can get increased army capacities when we upgrade with Blood Strongholds to Tier 4, which is going to take a while for us, but will happen eventually, so... Alright, let's... for now, you'll be back. You'll be back. And up guard lord, there you are, my friend. I suppose we could actually uh, recruit a new one with four extra levels on you, but then I kind of feel bad. I'll think about it. Uh, anyway, we're going to start you, Grandmaster of the Order Profundum, right here. This feels like the place to be for you. And... Well, let's see what you've got and what you can do. From the unfathomable... From the unknowable fathoms, it arises. Purged from the control of the first and their eldritch ways, the Abyssal Revenant uses his newfound power to craft a mount worthy of his station. A heroic killing blow, his Grandmaster of the Order Profundum, like the other Ordo Grandmasters, give us a vanguard deployment for all of the... Uh, uh, for all the Ordo Profundum stuff, which means his entire army, like the other Ordo Masters, will be Ordo Profundum. And ooh, he does have the Curse of Undeath as well as the Kiss of the Deep. Very, very nice. Obviously, he's going to get the Invocation of the Eternal Wanderer. We'll give him his unique line, Blood Frenzy. Up to plus 15 melee attack and 15% physical resistance and heals for the Depth Guard. Very nice. Let's get that... Uh, Fathom Terror thing he's got, Unnatural Force Incarnate, similar to uh, Lutz there, which is that little mini Mortis Engine effect around you. And then Terrible Blows is what? And it's just a straight up buff with a pretty massive increase of weapon damage based on each enemy killed, which means we should use Tide Call, most likely, in order to actually get you kills. Let's also do that. Let's get you Honor or Death, most definitely. Uh, you have Vangeist Revenge, which means you wouldn't need a Bloodkin Aspirant to cast Wind of Death, because it's, it's an equivalent. Uh, we should get you Heroic Killing Blow. We will eventually level stuff up for the Ordo, but for now you won't have them, so I think it's not as necessary. Hmm. How big are you on your mount? Fathom Terror, what does it look like? Oh, pretty big. And uh, that's a big target, which me. Oh, what do you have in terms of Disciples of Aberrush? Regeneration, Eldritch Roar, and Blight Swarm. Good ones. Uh, good ones. Uh, let's get your Grave Ward for that Missile Resistance, though. And I think we'll get Kraken's Pull and then Earthing, since you're going to be casting a lot. And Kraken's Pull is quite nice. Sadly, you will... Wait. Would you be able to immediately upgrade? Yes, you would. Let's get the War Armory. Like so. A lovely. A lovely indeed. Well, I guess we'll get to try you out instead, and at the same time, we've been saving stuff for you. Now, you currently have Eldritch Wounds, which is... 20% armor and stuff. It's not bad, but anyway, Talisman of Preservation. Uh, not the Book of Assure, but the other Black Harry Apt. Uh, enchanted item, I believe you were supposed to have a potion of healing. Hmm... 
And saving, well, the Obsidian Lodestones, we probably won't get too much use. I want to put the Staffs of Damnation on heroes. But right now, we just don't have heroes, so we have a lot of items that aren't given to anybody as yet. But, uh, well, we've been saving some. Anyway, uh, hand weapons, we don't have another Brass Cleaver, unfortunately. And, yeah, as soon as we get heroes, we can start spamming items on them. I guess for now, you can use the Fencer's Blades to get the additional melee defense, as yours is fairly low. And did we have another armor of fortune, or are you going to have to... Yeah, we did. All right. Is that better? Wait. Physical resistance, ward saving 5, armor versus 10 wards, and nah, nah, you can have the trickster's helm. That's gonna be better than the armor of fortune. We just gotta make sure we get another trickster's helm or an armor of destiny for uh, Anarch. As for ancillaries, definitely razor standard. Uh, Lich and pendant won't be too useful for you as your entire army will already have magical attacks. Oh, we do need to get you a veteran of the old keep so that you can move further. Although at the same time, we are saving money for Walla Karkin's upgrade, so I think we're going to wait to save said money. Uh, Gravedigger does nothing for us. In fact, I should really delete these. Not the Corpse Thieves, but the Gravediggers. But I'll do it later. Uh, mortal Informant, more Informer, Warlock, Sandbush Defense Chance. You know what? You're probably going to be fighting some Skaven down here, so there may be a good reason to have it. I guess if we can get a Banner of Eternal Flame or another War Banner or something like that, we can pop it on you. The Wailing Banner won't be too useful for now. And there you go. For now, that'll be your stuff. We'll also probably want to build a Order Profundum Hero Walter here so we can immediately get you some Depth Guard Champions. Like two at least. I am what I talk. But I guess we'll wait on that because we need to save the metal for Wallach's upgrade. All right, the rest looks good. A little bit of admin this turn, but, uh, well, you gotta admin when you gotta admin. Uh, Waldemar, stay here for the last couple of turns until your buddy there is ready. Anarch, I would like you to head to Grom Peak. And close victory, yeah? Well, nonetheless. And not worth our time in terms of fighting. We can get 2k for sacking it or 720 for raising it. Plus the metal. We do need the metal. And we'll take it. And then you can immediately go into camp and hide. Alrighty. Great and worthy act. We gotta pay attention to these as well. Uh, win five battles. Okay, we don't actually have to pay attention to yours because it's kind of weak. And oh, you were going to upgrade you to a uh, Ordo Templarum anyway. And oh, you have a quest. Right, I was not supposed to fight this yet until the update. All right, all right, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that eventually. That not even unlocked yet, but <laughs> nonetheless. Anyway, you're supposed to get up to tier five, so we'll wait on that. The horde growth is fine, I guess, and we will want to upgrade this for the blood kiss generation for all those heroes. But I think we can't spend the nine right now, so I think we're gonna have to wait. And I'm actually curious, what does the equivalent on the abyssal revenant do? Campaign movement range for armies at sea, 30% for armies at sea, more blood kisses, and then speed for depth guard. So depth guard, gonna be quick. Alrighty, and I do believe that that is that for what we gotta do this turn. So we can skip, 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 and turn. Hmm. Maybe we should stop on by and just get a duel with Astrogoth. He could be very near to us. Hopefully not dead. And Azag. Well, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, man? Can we actually reach you? You're you're really gonna move into range of Aberash's main stack. Just so that we can't do anything about the Silver Pinnacle, huh? Hmm. Oh, you do have Siege Attacker because you have the Zombie Dragon. Hmm. I have to wonder. If we go down here, will we still be able to reach him? And I don't know and the answer to that is. Let's see. This makes us lose... Go down to 30%. We have... 30% remaining. Now we wouldn't be able to reach him, I think. Or maybe we would. He's right there. <laughs> I guess we can risk it. We can always put Abrush in a camp right after. Alright, uh, Rutger, Rutger, whatever. Uh, we're gonna pop you into combat with these guys who don't like us very much. And we're gonna declare war on them directly. Like so. And close defeat with just this. 
Funnily enough, that probably means we could probably just send those guys in by themselves, but, uh, well, not right now. Uh, did we get any- oh, we got a new arms, I didn't even see that. Gauntlets of the First Sword, Reforged Armor, Physical Resistance, and Hit Point Increase. Lovely. Alright. There we go, Aberash. Uh, then you're gonna go right here, and I'm just going to hope that this works. Is that Russian range or is he just out of range? Ah, he's just out of range. Damn, okay, that didn't work. And... right... here. That is now in range. Alright, auto-resolve this. Another trickster assemble. Oh, fantastic. Uh, one for each Ordo Grandmaster. Uh, we could sack it for 4k or we could... Sack it for 4k next, or we could sack it or we'll probably get three precious metal next turn. I say we sack it, it's a decent amount of cash. Great and worthy act, but not worthy of a trickster's helm. That goes to Anarch, who currently is using an armor of fortune. There we go. Everybody gets one. Beautiful. And oh, I never gave you the black berry out. What the heck? I thought I did. Okay, whoops, my bad, my bad. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at all that. His blue armor, his blue items. If only there was a blue potion of healing uh, for him as well. Anyway, Amberesh, can you... Oh, he's just out of range now? You gotta be kidding me. It's just very, very slightly out of range. <laughs> oh, no, game. Why? Why you do this? If only he had the capability of carrying ancillaries around, but alas, he does not. Oh, well. Hmm. I'm just wondering if there's a way to increase his movement range right now, but I don't believe that there is. First of the blood dragons. At least not anyone that I am aware of. Oh well. Oh well, what can you do? Uh, we'll raise this next turn, then Aberash just go into the encampment, oh, and hopefully that'll mean Azag comes for uh, Mr. Rudiger there. Just exactly where you are. Actually close to where you are, like up here a little bit. Just so we're far enough away from the Silver Pinnacle, and then you can- oh damn. I shouldn't have moved him. Should have kept him in raiding. But that's okay. Alright, the rest of this is fine. Now let's see who else can go places. First of all, the lizards. I have not yet approached. All right. <laughs> the laughing from Wallach. I absolutely love it. The, uh, ow. Could have actually done this earlier. Uh, let's go for, I guess, Hall of True Silver. Make it easier to auto-resolve a little bit. And we don't care for the Ruby Ring of Ruin, but we can transform it, transform it into something more useful. Uh, you can go right here. comes for the Empire. And then you can wait. You can build stuff, can you not? Yes, you can. It's gonna take a little bit of cash, but you need to. And let's get at least two bloodkin thrall add up knights. Oh, they're so expensive. Wait, it would be cheaper to build them out of Wallach's army, wouldn't it? A moment. I want to check how much cheaper. Uh, these get oh, decently. Decently cheaper. Now we want to upgrade these guys to Blood Knights. These guys can maybe wait, but we could just transfer them for now. I really don't want Wallach waiting around for too many turns, though. So I think while we will take these guys... Two, three, four. We'll transfer them back, but we'll build... I don't even know how many we can build right now. Four. One, two, three, four. I was going to build six. All right. Make it possibly upgrade some others of those, and then if we want to spend... Wait, can you not go into raiding stance from here? Why? I guess you're stuck. All right, that's fine. Oh, is it because we summoned you this turn? I think we did. Whoops. Hmm. All right, so we'll build those up. Now... Hmm. Just out of curiosity, we have no capacity for these guys, though I guess we could increase capacity slightly by doing this. Wait, how much would it cost Darkness to upgrade you into a Blood Dragon veteran? 650. But we don't need capacity for it, so upgrade you. And you. And you. Ah, there goes all our valor. Darkness then this allows us to upgrade... Hmm, I was actually going to upgrade you two to more cataphract. Uh, say powers. you and you. To Blood Dragon Neophytes. 800. 
Guess we could do another one. No, cap is too high. Alright, I think I think we'll save the rest of the valor because we want to give it to somebody else. Uh Wallach, you will also want to upgrade this. Twenty thousand gold for the Ordo Draconis headquarters. Take the turn, and then build two more Bloodkin Thralls for the Abyssal Revenant to eventually make them into Death Guard. There we go. Like I said, a little bit of admin, but when you ever get whenever you get a new lord, it is quite necessary. Zacharias, Zaki, you're ready to go, ain't you? I wonder if Carl's still there. He is still there. Probably not worth the real fight, but this place is sort of able to defend itself now. Maybe it's time to redeclare war on the Empire. Not like the lover like us, <laughs> with all the stuff we've been doing. Destroy them. And declare what? Wait. Are you at war with anybody? You are at war with the Bellacor and the Fecundites. Who's richer, I wonder? Probably Bellacor. Join war against Reichland. Not much money, but we'll take it. Alright, like so. It was always going to happen, let's face it. And... destroy. We should, in theory, be able to auto-resolve this close victory, but the casualties remain low. This is just garbage units. It's not worth fighting. It's gonna hurt, but it was always going to hurt. And... We're gonna have to sack it so that we can move back. Another scroll of leeching. Very nice. Ah, you can return to our own territory. Hopefully we don't immediately get mobbed while this badly damaged. And buy more of those uh, Kemmler minions. Uh, the scrolls of leeching, because I don't like the items... They're just too situational. Whereas things like trickster shards are active always. Can be fused into another other trickster shard. Beautiful. Actually a very nice pickup. Alright. Good job for Edmund. And he's on his griffin now. Which would I would like to try out. But Carl was too low. So we couldn't have a yes, duel between awesome. him. Uh, between Deathclaw and that. Then this will allow you sir. To hit Dodenbach. And I guess we'll reinforce with Waldemar. There is still Balthi around, but... I wonder how much damage we're going to take doing this. Probably a decent amount, but... Yeah, go here. And... Yeah, there's no way he's attacking Gnome. We will... Out of resolve this. Alright, not too bad. Not too bad. Worth it. And we will sack it for a very solid amount of cash. And then we will raise it next turn while you all heal up. Lovely. And we got a Night Shroud for you, but we're going to replace you with, you know, somebody who isn't a super low level. Sorry. But it is what it is. Alright, who is up next? Abarash. Wait, we moved you, didn't we? Because we couldn't reach... Man. Can't believe you were like 1% away. Ah, uh, I gambled and lost. It happens. All right, Anarch, you are proceeding to Fallen King Mountain. You're supposed to meet up with this guy, uh, but I guess keep on going. I was going to put Albrecht in your army, but he's going to generate his own army at Castle Drakenhof, so we'll do that as soon as we hit Mount Gunbad. So it's fairly close to us, so we don't need to deal with it right now. Albrecht, let me move you in. Is there anybody else? No, we're out of metal. We still have Dragon Scales, though. We could, in theory, upgrade another one of these knights. And you know what? Aberash isn't all that hurt, or at least his army isn't so badly hurt. And... A moment. I have a thought. Winning a battle gives you extra movement range, does it not? Meaning, if we fight, for example, either the legendary hero one, or one of his... Gear. Now, I've been wanting to fight one of the gear ones, for example, especially one of the ones that have doubled, like uh, you, Dragon's Bane. That's the one that's been doubled, right? Dragon's Lament, Dragon's Bane, yeah, so we'll do you. The Tower's Master. Alright, and ooh, looks like a decently difficult fight, at least by virtue of the balance of power. We'll see about that. And this gives us a Dark Tormentor Blade as availability, which is pretty strong by the looks of it. The Ark will land, but for a moment, my lord, we should set out to meet them as they moor upon these shores. Go. And, yeah, we still have some reinforcements, uh, considering the enemy has a fairly big old pile of black guard and stuff. That's nice. And what are these lords? The Master's Champion? Ooh, they're flyers. Oh, I like that. Abarash, you have some, uh, you have some duels before you. Go.
us, my children, for this day has brought us a great and mighty opponent. But what predictable arrogance. The Black Arts Master sends his cattle aiming to ambush us instead of facing me himself. It seems that he must be persuaded down from his lofty perch. Let us witness if this arrogant Trushi is still smart after we cut his forces down. For the annihilation of his shore party will surely force him out. Ride to battle and fight well, my knights, for the chosen children of Avarosh will not be ignored. Reminds these self-aggrandizing fools just how swiftly their false sense of immortality can be taken by a single stroke of a deft blade. Ooh, another a great speech. I always get shocked. Uh, it still, it still shakes me. Absolutely fantastic. What fantastic work I uh, went into this mod. And it looks like we're going to be having a pretty darn and great battle as well. It'll be this uh, Black Ark map, not the standard Black Mark, uh, Black Mark, uh, Black Ark map here, but rather the uh, one where the Ark lands. We're going to be crossing, by the looks of it, a uh, big old bridge or at least uh, trying to make our way towards it and it looks like one of the big old enemy armies is going to meet us there and the enemy has one of these masters champions here which will be the first of many duels for Aberash in this particular fight alrighty Alrighty, and 6352 melee attack and defense when 567 weapon strength, you have no chance against Aberash. No chance at all. Looks like, look at that uh, stat disparity. Though, interestingly enough, Aberash has like no charge. His charge is at 32. We're gonna have to defeat some lords like Lewin and stuff and uh, uh, get him some charge, won't we? Though, I'm willing to bet that one of the items uh, that is available to him uh, has that as well. Anyway, just another quick look at the Black Arc maps. You gotta look of, uh, well, you gotta love Black Arcs. This is gonna be a very nice and atmospheric uh, battle for us to fight. Uh, we also have a secondary enemy force deployed directly behind us, which is quite interesting. So we're going to separate our forces. Aberash will lead his elites, namely the uh, uh, the infantry elites, to hold the uh, to hold the bridge here, obviously, because the infant or the cavalry wouldn't be able to maneuver anyway. So it'll be the Depth Guard Deck Watchers, the Disciples of the Path Warriors, and not the Bloodkin, but the Blood Dragon Neophytes. All the Bloodkin, whether they be the Adept Knights or the Thralls, are going to be led by our uh, uh, Aspirant, as well as all the Disciples of the Path Knights, who are going to be dealing with this army with, by the looks of it, a little bit of help from the Drakenhof Templar Knights. So, all of you, best get ready. Fantastically armored. And they're on the, uh, and they're on the cold one and nights as well, or cold one nights. Well, I guess they're, uh, they're on undead cold ones as well. And so this will be a very appropriate contest because I do believe there are some cold one dread knights in the enemy roster. So and it should be nice to see those two face off against each other. Anyway, time to actually get to the battle. Aberash heads directly into the fight with that master's champion. And I'm going to pop that cascading fire clip both to increase the weapon damage and the melee defense. And But as to whether that'll be enough, I doubt it. Anyway, that fight is going to go on for probably quite the while due to the large HP pool of the Black Dragon Riding Lord. We're going to take the time to summon that unit of phantoms on the field to block off the enemy Medusa and not allow her to use her little railgun shot against our melee infantry as they make their way up kill. The enemy champion is down by about a quarter or maybe a third of his HP so far, but our own champions, our own elites, are headed up that ramp and will soon be getting into combat. What Black Ark wouldn't have uh, Black Ark Corsairs? Gonna be plenty of these to work our way through, but many more elite units to come as well. Alrighty, and that champion's down to about a third of its HP now. We still have not yet moved our secondary army. They're just sort of guarding the entrance to the uh, uh, to the Black Ark here. 
And we're doing that so that uh, A, our army doesn't get hit in the back, but at the same time to allow our reinforcements slash allies to move in. Looks like the Masters Champion uh, didn't make too great a showing of um, themselves as they go down and have not been able to penetrate uh, the barrier of Aberash. Uh, this also means that we're just about ready to start moving in on the main enemy army. We're going to summon a unit of zombies to lead as the enemy does have more Masters Champions here. Here. Looks like plenty of them here, but if they do have those black dragon breaths, they may as well use them on the zombies rather than on our, uh, uh, on our other elite units. And here we go, there's the Cold One Dread Knights. We want a nice contest between them. A Hydra Breath comes in and Cold One Dread Knights will start facing off against the uh, Disciples of the Path Knights. 92 melee attack versus 44, so considerably more melee attack, but the enemy is more heavily armored. And with 48 units, however, their models have much less HP, so we should be able to bring models down much, much quicker. Now, this is our first unit of Disciples of the Path Knights, and our second one is currently surrounding and destroying the enemy Hydra, though it's going to take some time to work on that regenerating beastie. All right, and now our Bloodkin Adept Knights move in as well to dish out a little bit of additional damage to Cold One Dread Knights when it became clear that the uh, Disciples of the Path had already pretty much defeated them. All right, and very nice. The rest of our army is moving in. Once again, I'm getting, get, getting a little bit of help from our allies here. Drakenhof Templar Lord on an undead griffin facing off against the Master's Champion, although it looks like the Master's Champion is fighting roughly evenly with our allied Lord. Now, this isn't Aberash that they're facing off against, after all. That said, this enemy army is now very much in trouble as our Bloodkin Thralls have managed to move around the enemy flanks, both of the uh, Thrall Knights and the Thrall Warriors, and will destroy the enemy back line. Uh, the uh, Master's Champion that has landed here is going to be a little bit of an issue, as I'm sure it will be able to dish out decent damage to our Thralls. But as soon as we're done with the Hydra, or any of the other elites, we can simply send the disciples uh, in to deal with those enemies. We are still trying to make our way up the ramp here as well. The fight continues as our infantry elites have been embroiled in this battle for a good three minutes, let's say. Which ain't too bad. Impressed that the enemy is holding this long. But while they're holding, the enemy lord here, a supreme sorceress, just a level one now, uh, has been seen off. Uh, by Aberash, but it is finally time for the real foe to arrive. The most elite units and the master of this Black Ark uh, themselves. Or would they be the Admiral? I guess if they're... It depends on who's commanding the uh, Black Ark. Or who has the allegiance of the Admiral who commands the Black Ark. All right, and by the looks of it, we've nearly cleared our way through the enemy lines. Our allies have also brought more Drakenhof Templar Sky Reavers. Suddenly we are seeing these things all over the place in our armies and our allied armies, but they did hit the enemy in the back, crushing them between uh, the anvil, very, very sharp anvil, mind you, of the Depth Guard and Blood Dragon Neophytes and the, uh, and the Disciples of the Path and the Phantoms. Anyway, Aberash will chase down and kill off the... I think third enemy lord there we go who I love it when he finishes off enemies with that uh, sword throw ability always looks fantastic and very nice indeed and now that he is done with that he's going to deal with Kalek of the tower's master ooh 88 melee attack there we go that's a little bit more in line with Aberash's stats a little bit closer at least and he's also brought a bunch of shades with great swords a bunch of well a couple of medusa some cold one dread knights and a bunch of hargoneth executioners as well probably about as elite an army as we're likely to encounter here which is a pretty good sign that said, the rest of his armies have been destroyed. Mostly now it's just our Thrall Knights just riding around in the background, uh, running down the enemies, while we make our way up this ramp and get ready to face off against the other elites. Avarash has made his way in as well and will be going after the enemy lord in another duel, because he hasn't had enough of those. Oh, 
Honestly, considering that uh, the... Uh, considering that these guys, the worthy foe battles, generally seem to be much tougher than, well, regular legendary lord fights with uh, against enemy legendary lords. Uh, it's almost a little bit surprising that they don't have defeat traits of their own, but I suppose we already have so, so many. Plus, we get a bunch of other rewards for them. So, uh, a little bit much that way. Anyway, Aberash did cast at least one spell over on the blob of enemies as they moved. Uh, the uh, Wall of Fire, or Blood and Fire, whatever the uh, version of that is. And here we go, moving on into those Cold One Dread Knights with the Phantoms of the First Keep and the Disciples as well. And this is once again going to be a horrifically bad matchup for the anime. The Master is pretty much done, having dropped to about 15-20% to 20 of his HP. And the rest of his forces are now being engaged. Another duel between the Disciples of the Path, but I think they've proven pretty conclusively that they beat the Cold One Dread Knights pretty handily. And it looks like the master will begin to run, but where can you run, my friend? Okay. He's just shaking. Well, he'll run soon. He'll run soon. Trust me. <laughs> Alright, while the infantry are all moving in, getting ready to join our Disciples of the Path, which, heedless of the danger of the sheer amount of enemies, are fighting essentially unsupported, or at least were fighting unsupported. Here come our allies, helping with that support, and our own infantry to face off against those Harganath Executioners. Nice. Great weapon versus great weapon, glaive versus great sword. Great. And the master will fall. I didn't see the animation, but frankly, it'll be the same animation as the as all the black dragons that fall, so not that interesting, at least compared to the rest of the fight. Alright, lovely seeing the phantoms of the first keep face off against an enemy together with these disciples as well. Executioners wailing away on us with all that armor-piercing damage of theirs, but all damage hit at, or all damage applied to the phantoms is completely wasted, and we can keep them nice and healed up with those invocated oats. And just a little bit more damage, though, oh, more reinforcements have arrived from our allies as Drake and Hoff Templar Knights have joined the fray. I guess they're done chasing enemies around outside of the Black Ark. And Aberash has made his way back to his troops where he's going to go after that blood rack Shrine, so it can no longer apply buffs to the uh, nearby enemies, uh, while our uh, bloody aspirant, bloodkin aspirant, whatever, goes after the other bloodkin Medusa. Bloodkin, damn it! <laughs> blood rag, bloodkin, blood rag, <laughs> uh, Blood something, it's all blood something. Which, you know what, is kind of appropriate because, well, necromancy was essentially learned, or at the very least derived, from dark elf magic, and frankly, dark elves are kind of similar to vampires in the first place. A, they're immortal, and B, at the very least, uh, witch elves and their hag queens have blood rituals wherein they consume souls and blood and all that stuff and retain eternal youth. There's a lot of similarities to vampires among the uh, dark elven elite, so, you know. Which once again makes sense, since Nagash, who sort of, sort of, had a hand, let's say, in uh, creating uh, the vampires uh, there. A big hand, mind you. Uh, his magics was once again derived from the uh, Dark Elven magics. So it all makes sense. Anyway, another heroic victory for us in an absolutely glorious quest battle. Damn. Oh, another absolutely fantastic quest battle. The speech, the map, the uh, the sheer amount of troops that we had to face off against, and elite troops. Add to that, the crossing of that bridge with our own elites as the disciples of the path and the blood dragon neophytes and the uh, limited numbers of a depth guard held the line against the entire enemy first army while the rest of our army uh, went after the second. Dabarash dueling 
the master and the uh, servants or whatever as well. Everything was just glorious. Uh, we do have healing available to us, but we also have a fair bit of money and we've been spending. So I think we're going to still take the money. Always taking the money. But anyway, uh, very, uh, very nice indeed. All right, these guys are starting to rank up as well. We'd be able to upgrade them to Inner Circle Knights if we desire to do so. Uh, Dark Tormentor Blade randomly goes to Wallach Harkin. Hey, hmm. more uh, more valor is also nice, and we got that Brewer's Instincts buff now. So our entire uh, pile of armies is now buffed up. Uh, just out of curiosity here. All right, well, two things out of curiosity. So yes, yeah, so this. What were you using before? No, you have your own armor. You have your own thing. You have the Crimson Blade. Yes, this is part of Wallach's Blood Chalice. So, I don't know why that went to you. We could give this to somebody else. Hmm, Rubric of Dark Dimensions and Tormentor Sword. I mean, I guess we could give it to Anarch for now, or even this guy. Mostly because he's right there. And we only had Fencer's Blades for him, whereas Anarch, I believe, has a Obsidian Blade, which is fantastic as well. I wonder who has the guy who is more in need of the melee attack, whether it's Anarch or the Abyssal Revenant. Uh, Anarch is at 25 melee attack. Hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll probably, well, as we acquire more items, we'll swap those around most likely as well. Uh, also, Aberash, that should have rewarded you with a new item. And it'll be a two-handed weapon if you want it, rather than the other stuff. So just out of curiosity, what do we have here? Ooh, you get Sadistic Snare, so jerks won't be able to run as much. Uh, Anima Ignis gives you the ability to... It's some kind of bombardment spell, okay. And Clarion Call is an area for the entire map. A pretty big buff, but it's a relatively short-to-lived one. This gives you a massive increase to melee attack. Um, but you would be losing... Let's see... Well, about the same amount of melee attack, so this is roughly the same. You trade bonus versus large for bonus versus infantry. And you get a little bit more in the way of armor piercing damage, but you could hit a little bit harder. Uh, you do lose 20 melee defense and 15 armor if you do this. But have we really needed it, is the question. You know what, let's try it out. And then we'll see... The following demonic gifts will be removed, Shattered Aegis and the first of many. We'll do this. This drops your melee defense to a mere 67. And I guess we can't see it on his model in here, but we'll probably see it on the map instead. So we'll give it a try. Let's see how it works. I do like the additional abilities. I'm not 100% sure it's something we want without his shield. But on the other hand, we'll see. If everything is still having a huge problem just penetrating his barrier anyway, then the defensive items aren't really going to be as needed. Anyway, the winning of that battle oh, did indeed it. give us the additional range that I was hoping for, so... Dragon oh, you can't move, but that's fine. Uh, or it might not be fine, depending on if another army can reach you, actually. But anyway, Abrash, go here. I don't think you need to actually fight this again, because frankly, I doubt that uh, the enemy's worth your effort. And you could just start to resolve this. Sorry, Azag. You've been having some bad days lately, and ooh, more money. Yes, please. More money means more recruitment, means more armies, means more variety. It's all coming together. All right, Aberash back into encamp, and you'll heal up quite nicely, especially with the bonuses that we have, both short victory and from that other quest. You've also reached rank 40, so we need to start being careful with the skill points that you have remaining. Uh, definitely the disciplined core and definitely a rally, and we'll want the exotic dead maxed out. I may skip the Champions of the Path Order of Draconis. It's only 10% weapon strength, and... I'm not sure how much more we want to invest in them, as opposed to Aberash's stats. Granted, he doesn't really need the stats, but I'd like to get more into tenacity, mostly because I like the idea of him getting uh, uh, more HP, and thus more effective HP, and we definitely want Immortal Horror for everybody because of that battle healing cap. It's too useful not to have. I would like to get the first Wanderer, but I doubt that we'll have the points to get to it. But otherwise, I'm happy with that. Man, what a battle. These quests, man. 
What fantastic work from the modders. Uh, what we also have is now four blood kisses, which is just lovely, because we're going to go into a red thirst and immediately into nomadic dragons. Yes, it takes a lot of the blood kisses that we need for other purposes, but uh, as in heroes, but it's a lot of extra movement range. Especially after winning battles. It's just too valuable not to get early on, in my opinion. Anyway, I believe that's good. Let's double check our buildings. Ah, yes, the Awakening. We need to upgrade you, and we'll need to acquire 9 metal to upgrade the Lost Library of Huatl and unlock that quest as well. Middenheim is fine. I did want to build a Bloodkin Aspirant, Thrall Bastion, Thrall Barracks, whatever here, but we just don't have the metal for it right now. Who's raiding right now, incidentally? Zack, you're in camp, and you're in encamp as well, but neither of you can raid, so there's not much we can do about that. And nobody's raiding, meaning we won't get any bonus metal next turn. Alright, it looks like we'll need to acquire it the old-fashioned way. I guess we will. Alright, unassigned skill points, character initiatives, and... and the turn. Probably could have double-checked some... Diplo stuff, but I always forget. And Balthazar Gilt will in fact attack with... Oh my. Would you look at that. Three full stacks and he'll attack Waldemar rather than Zacharias, which is a smart move. As Zacharias will then come in as a reinforcement and Waldemar's army will be in trouble. I now very much wish I had replaced you with that higher level guy, which I was gonna. But then I was gonna delete this entire army and... <laughs> That didn't quite work out, but oh well, it happens. Sometimes when that happens, you gotta be punished for it so that you learn your lesson. And by you, I mean you guys. I won't learn my lesson because I never do. Away we go. All right, here we... It's kind of like, like really loud clanking noises when he moves. Quite interesting. Huh. Maybe due to the hidden mass, since these guys can transform into big old dragons, so they secretly have much more mass than they would appear. But anyway, here we go. And Gelt has brought three stacks with him plus of course guilt himself there's gonna be a lot of enemies uh, to contend with here and uh, slightly concerningly so i might add i hope that my pc can handle this particular battle because it's just so many troops that are going to be on the field honestly if it was skaven troops i think that uh, my pc would crash mm, trying this as it uh, well it's had difficulties with skaven battles in big numbers before now yeah. also yeah it looks like this episode is gonna be that big old battle episode as clearly the assault on the black arc with all those troops was not enough anyway here's how we're going to handle this big old blob of skeletons we don't care about any of them in fact we were going to delete them eventually anyway because frankly they take up an army slot and uh, don't serve too much of a purpose they're going to head in and try to distract as many of the enemy units as possible the more enemies just sit there uh, distracted by skeletons spear and warriors alike uh, the more we can hit in the back with our bloodkin and graveguard that are moving in on this side of the map idea is to crush the big armies that the enemy has brought ignoring the relatively small army back here uh, between our own really it'll just depend on how long the skeletons can hold out especially with gelt dropping spells on them all right, and there's, yeah, there's going to be some frames dropping in this battle just because of the sheer number of units, but, well, I think that was to be expected here. Anyway, uh, this is also a chance to see one of these uh, Ordo Profundum Lords in action since we haven't had a chance to play around with them uh, this campaign all that much, though we will be doing so shortly. And also to see a Mikhail Harkin in action a little bit here. And he's a pretty big boy by the looks of it, as well as his source. Man, he's actually gigantic. Look at him in comparison to an enemy lord. He's like twice the size. Chaos steroids and got nothing on phantom vampire steroids. I mean, <laughs> what? 
<laughs> oh my lordy big. He damn big. And ooh, cool effects from the uh, cool effects from the Order Profundum guy though. Man, can't wait to see these guys do more things. Alrighty, well otherwise it's a big old bro. Looks like a Searing Doom comes in on uh, several of our units of skellies and that is going to hurt. Oh great, more particle effects for my PC to get angry at me at. Hopefully you guys can't hear the uh, uh, the fans blowing because it's, uh, it's pretty heckin' loud. Alrighty, and the skeletons certainly took some damage there, but we're keeping them relatively healed up, and the rest of our forces, our second army, is nearly there. At the very least, the Graveguard are moving on, and the Bloodkin have already arrived, and the Black Knights are soon to join the fray as well. I was hoping to uh, keep the Black Knights there for a little while until the enemy army moved in with its ranged reinforcements, which is all of this, but because the enemy already has 40 units on the field, we have have no units. This is also where we can see our units of Phantoms of the First Keep Warriors in action. And those great swords are looking like they're doing well and they're holding off a pretty big blob of enemies by themselves. I love all that lightning effect from the Order Profundum guy as well. We're gonna get a lot of entertainment value, I think, from the uh, from the Depth Guard armies, and try to get those on the field as soon as possible as well. Alrighty, skeletons look like they're still holding. Gonna try to reposition them slightly just to increase their surface area. And essentially, distract as many units as possible without getting more than one or two units hit and by a searing doom from Gelt at the same time. This battle is real big as well, so we're fighting on high ground, we're fighting on low ground, we're fighting amidst the trees. The dead are everywhere, but frankly, so are the living. Where the living outnumber the dead, it just feels wrong. Um, but soon they'll all be dead and we kill them and we raise them as we do. At this point, several of our skeleton warrior units have collapsed. The balance of power is, however, in our favor, and our grave guard are moving in and starting to hit the enemy units in the back lines. The hammer and anvil approach is going to work out here, though, funnily enough, the grave guard would probably function better as an anvil. At the very least, they preserve their HP. Now, this way, now the enemies are blobbed up. I also got to point out, we have no damaging spells in our armies, so we have to kill the enemy, all the enemy, the old old-fashioned way and just straight up kill them all with uh, with blades much of nothing else the blood dragons are going to appreciate other ordos perhaps not as much but nonetheless and oh those poor poor halberdiers having a very bad time against those phantoms of the uh, phantoms of the first keep they have 900 mass as well which compared to the 100 of the halberdiers makes sense as to why they're pushing them around so much Alrighty, and the enemy army is now having a pretty bad day. We did have uh, Zacharias try to go after Gelt, but Gelt basically just ran off at the field of battle. One of the unfortunate aspects of this is where the enemy deployed means that they were relatively close to the edge of the map, so a decent amount of them will escape. And of course, we'll do our best to chase them all down, or at least as many of them down as possible. Uh, but there's a limit to how much we can do, especially since the living are generally slightly faster in terms of their move speed uh, than uh, the dead. At least to some, some of them. Um, but we do have the Bloodkin as well as our Black Knights to be able to chase enemies down, which should be faster. More of that Warp Lightning-like stuff coming in from our, uh, our Profundum Lord here. And keep on spinning to win, my friend. Enter the blender to the uh, Empire State Troops. And just like the Ordo Templarium, these guys once also look fantastic once their uh, green armor is, uh, well, covered in some red. 
All right, keep it up for just a little bit longer. Balance of power is still about 70% in our favor only, but the enemy is going to start running out of units. We are starting to outnumber the living, as it should be, though there are still 40 units on the screen from the enemy, and they're still entering the fray. Just so, so many enemies. Alright, and... Oh, the poor little graveyard. Uh, feel bad for him. And not much to say about this tactically anymore. We're not making any more fancy moves. Just trying to chase down all the enemies that we can and stay in combat uh, wherever else. I do like the fact that the uh, phantoms are very easy to spot on the map. They're trying to chase down this uh, enemy general as they do move fairly quick, but I was hoping that they would surround and kill him, which apparently has failed. Our two armies have also sort of crushed them into each other. Crashed, whatever. Uh, crushed themselves, got crushed together. So now the Grave Guard and the Skeletons are making up one blob. This will at least keep some of the Skeletons safe, though, once again. We don't really care about casualties among the chaff. Technically, we shouldn't even care about casualties among the Graveguard, it's just that, uh, well, they're quite expensive to recruit. At least compared to the regular skeleton chaff, so I'd rather not waste tons and tons of money re-recruiting them. And obviously the same goes for our Bloodkin, but we've generally kept them safe, hitting the enemy in the back with them primarily and allowing them to maintain their HP. And damn! Nine minute long brawl, I think it took about a minute or maybe at most two to get into combat. But this has been a long battle and hardly surprising with two stacks, two full stacks versus three stacks. But that said, all good things have to come to an end and like the Black Ark battle, and this battle is done as well, minus for some reason this one unit of crossbowmen. Why are you still firing? Oh, they're probably from the reinforcements that uh, were from this army, which means that they didn't chain route together with the other armies. But not to worry, I'm sure as soon as they get hit by literally any unit, this tiny pile of crossbows will route as well. They are shaken after all. All right, and... Let's just overrun them. There we go. With that, all the enemy armies will shatter. We're going to spend quite a bit of time chasing as many of them down as we can, as many lords and units, but we can do that off screen. Let's see what's left after that. Damn, Gelt. Oh, I guess it's just a day of massive battles as well. We got another one under our belt here. Balthazar Gelt brought so many men to their dooms. Our first army was also pretty much destroyed uh, through the course of that battle with the skeleton units. Then we were able to recover... I don't know, several hundred or thousand troops of theirs uh, via healing over the uh, course of the uh, chase down of the enemy units. But damn, uh, that was that was a good time. Uh, we can take, I think, the healing for now because we're going to want to auto-resolve the remnants of these armies if they can be reached, which remains to be seen. As Ag remains wanting to peace out, I think we'll knock out the Fallen King Mountain and then we'll peace out with him for additional cash. It's all about getting that cash to get those additional units on the field. And wait, 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 uh, Khalid al Montazir wants a peace as well. Now we're probably gonna burn our way through his lands to get to Astrogoth and uh, some other factions. Uh, what I would like to see... Alright, enemy killed in battle, enemy killed in battle. There's a metal storm for Waldemar. A shield of Talos, which you don't need. And another razor standard. Oh, right, the witch hunters. <laughs> I, had, I had briefly forgotten about them. I gotta remember that they will be coming back in force. And ooh, we gotta be particularly careful with Anarch right now, because his army isn't, well, good. And... Hmm. Castle Drakenhof should, in theory, be able to defend itself. We're gonna need another army capacity, but we don't have the Martial Valor to get it up and running in that manner. Ah. 
where the foe spawned where it spawned before. Well, that's just... <laughs> it's okay, we have five turns to get to it. All right, so how do we handle this? We need to raise the silver pinnacle for the metal, because we're completely out of metal. And we will also want to trade a bunch of stuff from Aberash to Rudiger, so that he can then trade it to Anarch. Anarch, we're going to have you move to Fallen King Mountain and raise it. And then encamp yourself and then raise your camp to t tier 5. Because that's what we've been waiting on, or one of the things. Uh, you don't need that scarecrow. Well, maybe. I'll think about it. Auto resolve. And raise. And then. Oh, good. I was going to say stop moving, but he didn't move. Good job, Anarch. All right, and this is going to cost us a good old 16k. This is why we need all that cash. And with that up and running, we'll immediately go for this and start generating more blood kisses. Or to four again. Very nice. I mean, we do have texts that are blood kiss reliant all over the place. Some of which I'm sure are quite good. On top of needing the... Uh, and uh, the blood kisses for heroes, so we need to generate as many as we can. Anyway, you, sir, go to the Silver and, Pinnacle. And, glory. And, and you could do this yourself without even needing to involve Aberash. Uh, but Aberash can leech the XP. Mm, which may be worth our time. In fact, this Bloodkin probably wants to get another point in Mentor, Deadly Onslaught. Do we have points left over? We should. Let's see, we have four points, so one, two, three, four, and then we have ten points, one, two, three, four. Some of these, maybe the Gaze of Nagesh. Yeah, I'd say get at least one more point in Mentor, probably no need for two, and then get Scarred Veteran and then Moonmaker. I'll probably still get uh, Gaze of Nagesh just because, uh, even if we are, let's say, super unlikely to use it. Anyway, Aberash, I would let- wait. I would like you to... Hmm. I'm just wondering which is the best direction to move Aberesh in. We could actually trade directly to Anarch von Karstein. The thing is, we want to hunt down Skarsnik, we want to hunt down Tretch, and we want to hunt down Astrogoth. I don't really want to move all the way back up here if we could go up and then quickly kill off Astrogoth and Drash and Grimgore and whoever's around here. And then whatever is here, we can go through the uh, Riptide afterwards. Hmm. Which would mean not traveling this way and then having Rudiger ferry over. It would also mean we'll need you to loop back around to Mount Gunbad. That's probably fine. Alright, fine. Uh, go here. Leech briefly. These things still need to be traded. No, they've been getting plenty of ranks as well. Ooh. Another thought crosses my mind. Uh, raise the rudder of this, and then raise it. I think what we might want to do is actually fight another quest battle, or another one of those, uh, uh, whatchamacallit battles, the worthy foe battles, at the start of next episode, allowing Aberash to feed more XP into the various Bloodkin and Thrall units, and thus having them at a higher level for when we trade them to Anarch. Because once again, we want Anarch to be able to function on his own. So I think that'll be the best way to do it. And then we trade them once they're at a higher level and ready for uh, various types of upgrades. Yes. Yes, all right, that's what we'll do, but we will do it next time because we're out of time. Had some absolutely glorious and massive fights uh, this time around. I'll probably fight some of these little minor remnant battles between the episodes just so that we uh, don't have to waste time on them, or at the very least, ought to resolve them. And then when we come back, we continue more worthy foes to select and fight more uh, quest battles, more library stuff and item stuff to unlock, more units to try out. So stay tuned for more Blood Dragons. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below especially to Threshold, all glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.